there and welcome back. You are on My English Space with Teacher Marianne here looking at your English and trying my best to help you improve it. Also having fun. So killing two birds with one stone. Isn't that fantastic? But wait, what do I mean by that? Make sure to stay until the very end of this video because in this lesson you're going to find out what idioms are, why you should learn them, we're going to look at some nice ones and also explain what they mean. Definitely, this lesson will help you grow your vocabulary and give you a hint about how to use idioms correctly and effectively to talk about your everyday life. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And now, what are we waiting for? Let's just get down to work. What is an idiom? An idiom is a group of words whose meaning is different from the meaning of the words taken separately. So, at the beginning of this video, I was telling you that we were gonna learn together and also have some fun. It was like a promise that we would kill two birds with one stone. What did I actually mean by that? Was I talking in a literal sense? No, no way, because the process of learning English and uh, that one of killing birds are two different things. So what I actually meant in a metaphorical way, of course, was that we're going to solve two problems at once. If you're interested to stick around, please find out that uh, idioms are very important groups of words that help us um, express ourselves in a more natural way and that they're present everywhere in movies, songs and live shows. There are groups of words that most often sound like metaphors, so it's impossible to translate them word for word. Being so often used in everyday English, they can give you a real headache if you don't know them. Why learn English idioms? Why is it so important to learn English idioms? This is today's question. First of all, because they are really common in everyday English, in real life English. Second of all, because they add color to our language, making us sound more natural and fluent, much more interesting. Last but not least, they give our English a well worth boost, leveling it up, so taking our English to the next level. Now, let's boost our English by looking at other examples with idioms. The second one that I'd like us to look at is, it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. So, learning how to use idioms, English idioms, isn't rocket science. All you have to do is look out for them in movies and songs and maybe live shows decipher their meaning and use them yourself. If we take this idiom in a literal sense, we might think that it's something that uh, might deal with the science of rockets. Is that so? Is that about making or building some rockets? No, no way because we're just talking here about the process of learning English. And what I said is that learning idioms is not rocket science. So it's just not complicated. Learning how to use idioms isn't a complicated process. It's not complicated at all. So let me further explain here. If it was a science called rocket science, I think that learning idioms couldn't be any more difficult than rocket science. Does it make sense? So again, learning idioms 
isn't rocket science, it's not complicated. Let's move on to our next idiom. Hit the books. Hit the books. Hmm, why would we have to hit the books? Or even punch them? Or slap them? I really don't understand. How could anyone do such a thing? I can't do this. Why should I have to hit the books? Would it help me in any way? Or you? Oh, no way. Not at all. So, if we look at this example, Rob has a very tough exam tomorrow, so he'll definitely have to hit the books. Does this mean that he will have to punch the books to pass the exam? Oh no, Rob will have to study hard for tomorrow's exam so that he will pass it. So, hit the books actually means to study hard. To study hard. Have too much on your plate. Have too much on your plate. Hey, uh, is this about a restaurant and some food that you're gonna eat? And it's too much, you can't handle it. Sounds so fun if we take this idiom in the literal way. So let's take this example. This project sounds cool, but I had to turn him down. I really have too much on my plate right now. I really have too much on my plate right now. So what I mean here is that I'm so overwhelmed and I have so many things to do at this moment that I can't handle some other things too. So to have too much on your plate or to have a lot on your plate means that you are too overwhelmed from having too many things to handle at the same time. To keep talking about food, here's another one my cup of tea my cup of tea here's an example in our family we just love spending time in nature hiking and stuff but when it comes to camping it's not really my cup of tea and that's because of the mosquitoes you may be wondering What's your hiking and camping got to do with drinking tea? Is there any connection between the two? Actually, no. There is no connection between hiking and spending time in nature and drinking tea. What I actually meant here is that camping, so staying in a place over the night, is not to my taste. It's not actually what I'd choose for myself. So this idiom, my cup of tea, but you can also pronounce it faster, my cup of tea, my cup of tea. So by cutting out that the sound, the sound, cup of tea, cup of tea. Yeah, and this sounds also more natural. So I was saying that this idiom, my cup of tea, is widely famous for its negative form. So it's not my cup of tea. It's not my cup of tea. We talk about something like opera's not really my cup of tea. Uh, because it means that it's not something that I really love. It's not something that I enjoy. But we can also refer to this by using it in an affirmative form. Like in, but reggae is really my cup of tea. Reggae is certainly my cup of tea. That means that I really enjoy listening to reggae. It really gives me great pleasure to listen to reggae. Next, keep your chin up. Keep your chin up. Is there a certain position we should keep our chin in? <laughs> no, there is none. So when I say that, People in our country are still keeping their chin up 
despite COVID issues. People in our country are still keeping their chin up despite COVID issues. Means that they're still cheerful and hopeful, even if they're passing through difficult times. So, in a literal sense, yeah, it means something very weird. But in a metaphorical way, it just means that you should get on with your life, even if you you've experienced something really bad and not really nice. This idiom can also be used as a way of encouragement for somebody to make an effort to stay confident and positive when they are in a difficult situation. Like in, I know that failing your driving test wasn't easy, but next time you'll do better. So chin up, chin up. So wear your heart on your sleeve. Wear your heart on your sleeve. So here's another one from the same area, body parts. Is it actually possible to wear your heart on your sleeve? That is right here. Can you actually do that? Certainly not. Here's my example for you. As a teacher, I have to grade my students' not so brilliant work with poor marks. Oftentimes, as much as I want to be tough on them, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And this doesn't mean that I put my heart right here on my sleeve, but they can tell I'm sorry for that, however harsh I'd like to appear in front of them. So to wear your heart on your sleeve means that you show your true feelings openly. Now that we're done, do you agree with me that learning idioms isn't rocket science? Hope so, but please don't stop here. Just practice on your own now. So first of all, watch my video as many times as possible and then Practice on your own by answering my following questions. What's your cup of tea? And the second one, how do you react when you have too much on your plate? So please don't forget to leave your answers in the comments. And if you found this lesson useful and you'd like to come back on my channel, please subscribe and also give it a like. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around until the very end. See you next time. Bye!